Welcome and thanks so much for joining us on the Owatonna Today Show. Whoa! Hi. <laughs> should I move or should the camera move? No, we can't no. figure that out. I, either way, we'll make it work. It is Wednesday, September 17th. We are very, very glad you're with us. I'm Deb Gillard, your host for today's program. Um, we have a great show for you coming up today. I'll be mentioning what we have on in just a few minutes. But of course, you can always see us on Charter Channel 8, six days a week here in the Owatonna area. And far beyond that, you can find us, of course, out on the internet now. We have a YouTube channel. When you get to YouTube, just type in Owatonna Today Show. That will get you there to uh, this program. And I think others, right, Leanne? They're kind of archived mm -hmm. there so people can get to other They're programs. Um, we do have a Facebook page as well. You can go there. You can like us on Facebook. Once you do that, you'll receive notifications of upcoming shows and things like that. And you can also like any show that you would you would like to as well. Um, and along that line, as we um, finish out the Renaissance Festival season, we are if you like our Facebook page or like one of our shows, um, you are in a drawing for a pair of Renaissance Festival tickets through, I think, goes through the end of September. So we'll be giving away a pair every week. So you can go there and find us on the Internet, and you can see us on Charter Channel 8. And, of course, we welcome your comments, um, your ideas for guests or show topics. Please send those via email to owatonatoday at charter.net or you can call Leanne at 390-5751. As I mentioned, we've got a very good show for you today. Coming up after our first break, heading out on location um, with Shelly and Leanne and Mark Fritch at the Owatonna Public U Utilities to see all that has been done um, to, in the remodel there, which they are uh, uh, approaching closing, I think. So a very good tour of that facility. When we come back then, after that, we will be in studio with Elizabeth Bratch from the Steel County Humane Society talking about all the things that are coming up with that organization. So let's take this first break and head out on location. Stay with us. I'm Dan Branstead of Carlson Branstead and Company, certified public accountants. We support the Oatana Today Show. Greetings, I'm Laura Ressler, Director of the Steel County Historical Society, and I welcome you to our History Center. We invite you to join in all our activities events where we honor the past and look towards the future. Hi, I'm Stan Groff, Director of Steel County Public Health and a member of the United Way Community Leadership Team. United Way focuses on the building blocks of life, education, income, and health. Our programs and initiatives prepare children from birth for academic success, well-paying jobs, and a healthy lifestyle. That's why I joined Mayo Clinic Health System and the Owatonna School District to lead this year's campaign. We invite you to invest in our community by giving to the United Way. There's been a lot of people wondering what's going on in the Owatonna Public Utilities building, and we are here to show you. We are here this morning, this afternoon, whatever time of day it is, it's been a long day for me, to look at the beautiful new facility. And why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself first so everyone knows who you are. Sure, I'm Mark Fritch, General Manager of Owatonna Public Utilities. And Mark, how long has this process been to the end of phase one here? Uh, the end of phase one, well, it's, it seems like almost forever since we <laughs> talked about, you know, we had flood issues, what are we mm -hmm. going to do with this building and so forth. The demolition took about a year. Mm -hmm. And the phase one has been close to a year as well. Okay. 
So we are at this process where people have moved into offices. The public can now come into this main area and it's just actually being utilized. Yes, we opened for business on the 25th, okay. Monday, and our first customers came in through our entrance area. You can see out here we have a temporary ramp. People are asking, this doesn't look very nice on the entrance. <laughs> well, it, it isn't, it's just temporary. Right. We'll have a new, uh, uh, new facade out in front, mm -hmm. new walkway coming in, and uh, entrance will really look nice at that point. Well, let's talk about where we were right now. What area Area of the old building where we are right are, in, are we right now? Sure, yeah, we're in the boiler area, okay. and, and if uh, not too many months ago, we would have been inside one of the boilers. Actually, <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> and those were three or four story tall boilers, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, several stories tall, yeah. and uh, yeah, that's where we used to generate our energy until mm -hmm. the flood took it out of service. <laughs> Thank you. Well, now look what the flood gave us. It's yes. always a good thing, isn't it? It gave us a great opportunity, and um, people are really pleased in what uh, what we've done with it so yeah, far. Yeah, it is. It's very beautiful and industrial. And one of the things that you were just telling me was that there is actually a lot of um, opportunities for the public to use this space. Right. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, part of the design, we've got input from people. They said, you know, we need more public meeting space as well. So when we looked at that, uh, we had the opportunity to create open space, uh, uh, conference rooms and stuff for public usage mm -hmm. and we're hoping that that can uh, people can really enjoy that as we move forward and literally for any kind of event you might have where you have well, what I'd like to do Leanne if that's okay is we'll go up and look at a conference room that will be available for public use but even this main area if you want I am imagining the carolers singing here is going to sound great so just having those kind of events would be a lot of fun too it sure will be yeah. yes all right well stick with us we're going to go into a conference room we'll get a mini tour around the building that sound okay sounds all great. right we'll be right back stay with us And we're back. We are now in what you're calling the commission room, because this is where the commissioners meet. Yes. For the public utilities. And uh, this is going to be used as a conference room, but what other uses are you hoping will be used for this area? This is an example of one of the areas that could be open for the public as well, for different events and so forth. Uh, the tables, everything can be moved out of the way, and uh, we have an area for a large screen there too. Mm -hmm. Uh, the lights controllable, so it's a perfect uh, presentation, meeting, mm -hmm. uh, conferences, training sessions. Well, I even noticed that the tables are on wheels, so it truly was made to be convertible, to yes. change into whatever you might need. Right, countertop set up if you need to bring caterers in for some, mm -hmm. some event and so forth, so very flexible for mm -hmm. different uh, opportunities. Yes. Well, and you were also mentioning out, out uh, when we were out in the foyer that this actually can be used after hours. So all of the OPU business stuff is closed down and actually this can be used pretty much at any time that they need to. Exactly. We designed the security around it so then public events can happen and happen in here without any impact to our operations yeah. and so forth. One of the great things about this is the location that, that the utilities is in. We're right by the beautiful uh, the river, but sometimes that river can be kind of a pain in the neck. <laughs> yes, the hundred year floods that seem to come every 10 years. <laughs> I mean, we might have, might have to rename those. But we want to take a quick look at some of the things that you've done, because I know that um, you've looked at other facilities that have been near rivers and, and kind of seen how they've handled the problems. I'd like to take a quick look at some of those solutions that you have and show you guys what things are going to look like maybe once you kind of come out to the park and can see what those things what's the start of it is looking like right now so stick with us we're going to change this a little bit and we're going to take a look at that so we're looking at a couple of different things here we're seeing a big square building and that is for your vehicle storage yes yes the uh, the original one was flood damaged mm -hmm. and uh and so we needed to replace it with something, and so you can see that's why it's so far off the ground and, <laughs> yeah. and closed the way the old one was as well. Yeah, just to make sure that the, it's, the vehicles are a little bit more secure because we need them during those emergencies. We yes, don't need we them do. to be just damaged. But as we look below it, we're seeing some, a rock wall that's kind of got some tiered things. Tell me a little bit about the process and the thought behind this new system. Sure. The rocks are part of what's called a gabion wall to hold back the river when it does flood again, uh, hopefully not for a long time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yet this uh, entire project was designed so if a flood does come up well over you know five or ten feet higher than uh, that rock wall down there that uh, the bottom part of the power plant can still flood out without any, in any impact to operations and then the drainage will all be there so we can uh, have it all cleaned up after the fact. And you even have flood doors to kind of help alleviate some of the pressure that might build up higher. Right, the entire uh, outside perimeter of the power plant has these flood doors in it and they're used quite extensively in Florida, <laughs> where uh, obviously they have a lot of flood and storms yeah. and so forth. And they're designed, once you have water pressure on one side, they'll open up and flood. At the same time, keep animals and, and other things out from getting inside Floaties, the plant. Floaties, so to speak. Yes. <laughs> right. 
So this is really an opportunity for um, just to kind of to be, um, I want to say, ahead of the game with some of the other plants around here maybe just to kind of try something new in our area that maybe we haven't tried before. Right. But has been, is proven in other areas of the country. Yes. Yeah. And, it, you know, using that technology gave us the opportunity to utilize this plant instead of abandoning it. Yeah. You know, and that's what people wanted to uh, keep this as, it was iconic part of the city mm -hmm. and it's identified as part of the city and uh, we've been able to do that with this project. That's so great. And one of the great icons of, is, of course, the windows that are on the east side of the building. So let's go upstairs to an office or another conference room, I think it is, yes. and uh, check out what that view is like so people can see it for themselves. And we're back in another conference room, which is yet to be named. Yes. Um, but what I love, okay, so, it's, so you have to take a tour, and you, you are going to be giving tours, correct? Tours, and we're looking at spring for a grand opening, so the entire community can uh, you know, see, see what's done and yeah. have uh, more specific tours and yeah. celebrate. Well, the reason why I really do suggest the tours is this room specifically was where one of the old boilers were, correct? Uh, one of the old uh, uh, water tanks were the boilers, right? Yes. And you can see the shape and the carpeting is actually the same diameter of that tank that yeah. was in this room. Which is so interesting just to me because you could have just done it all one color, but you wanted to make a nod to the old facility and yet still make it look also a little bit more modern and interesting. And, and you're going to find touches like that throughout. You told me a little bit about the paint schemes. Yes, they're based on the colors inside the power plant at the time, mm -hmm. uh, the different you know, yellows and uh, other colors and so forth to try to keep the historical perspective that was in there. So that, yeah, every room, every area in, in here has a story to tell. Mm -hmm. um, how old is this building? That's a good question. Different uh, sections of the building have been added on over the last, uh, you know, 50 years, <laughs> and uh, and this was the newest section put in with the largest boiler and uh, mm -hmm. turbine. Okay. Uh, and so, so that's why you can see from the outside different uh, brick themes <laughs> as you keep moving towards uh, towards uh, Bridge Street. And another thing, when people notice as they're coming from Bridge Street, is that you still you have windows inside of windows. Yeah. And tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, we wanted to keep the historical perspective of what the old uh, windows used to look like, uh, but still replace all those with um, uh, nice insulated Viacon windows. And so you'll see the frames from the outside, and we even kept some of the old uh, uh, wired glass in there for historical reasons mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people like the glass look, <laughs> and some don't. It's about 50-50 right now. We'll take a poll later to find sure. out for sure. You mentioned that a majority of work that was done here was done by local contractors. Yes, it was. We went out for bids, and we're pleased that the local contractors, uh, you know, won out on most most of those bids. And it does make sense, and they're they're closer. They don't have to travel as far, yeah. so the the costs were less. Why was it so important for this building just to keep some of that historical perspective, and not just knock it all down and start from ground zero? It um, the community much said that they've always identified the city with this uh, with the stacks with the plant uh, and the way it looked uh, and it became a part of the uh, you know the theme for Owatonna. Mm -hmm. And so we want to keep that going. Keep it going yeah. yes. Um, when is the open house again? We're looking at spring sometime okay. in spring. So, so watch if it warms up the sooner it warms up the sooner we'll have one. We'll be finished with phase two and uh, and complete completed with the entire project in the new parking area out there by the uh, uh, end of this year good and uh, you know one of the things people are going to see is the old office area being torn down mm -hmm. because that just keeps getting flooded out and we can't you know uh, use that because of that those mm -hmm. issues at the same time there's enough room in this plant to house all the people that were in that those areas and you said in continued growth so it's really yes. exciting so make sure you do come when you get a chance to get a tour and then of course come to the open house when you have an opportunity thanks so much for your time today You're it's welcome. a pleasure to see the building thanks. we'll be right back with the Owatonna today show stay with us Recreational fires are allowed within the Oatana city limits. They must be contained within a fire pit or a device designed for such use and can be three feet in diameter and no more than three feet high. They must be 25 feet from a building or combustibles. Only untreated or unpainted woods must be used. 
Fires must be attended by a person at all times that are capable of extinguishing the fire. This has been a safety tip from the Owatonna Fire Department. Have you talked to your teen lately about marijuana? Maybe you should. Regular marijuana use can sap a teen's motivation to learn. Users do not live up to their potential and drop out of positive activities. Marijuana affects memory and learning and stays in your system for weeks. Marijuana also affects judgment and perception. Reaction time while driving is reduced by 41% after smoking one joint and 63% after smoking two, affecting the safety of your teen and others on the road. You need to talk to your teen about the effects of marijuana use. It's not just a harmless high. For more information, please contact the Safe and Drug-Free Coalition of Steele County. Hi, I'm Glenn Mager. And I'm Tim Thomas of the Brick Mager Funeral Home. And we're proud to serve the Medford and Owatonna areas with cremation and traditional funeral services. And we're proud to be a part of the Owatonna Today Show. Hi, this is Barry Gillespie, president of ERA Gillespie Real Estate, where our pledge is to save you money, save you time, and simplify your life. And we're proud supporters of the Owatonna Today Show. Hello, I'm David Einhaus with the Oatana Foundation. Thank you to all of our donors who have helped make Oatana a better place to live. Will you join us today with a financial gift? Oatana Foundation is a proud sponsor of the Oatana Today Show. Welcome back. Thanks again for joining us on this Wednesday, September 17th. And as I mentioned, I have Elizabeth Bratch in here from the Steel County Humane Society. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, thank you. Good. And you've been with, uh, involved with the Humane Society for quite some time. Yes, in 2005 I joined. Locally here. Yes. And your role is you're, you're on the board? I am currently on the okay. board. And I also work on the fundraising committee okay. and, and uh, work on some specific fundraisers. Okay. So we're going to be talking about a few of those. We're going to be talking about adoption. Our viewers know that usually when we have our Humane Society folks here, we have little kitties crawling around the table and maybe a dog over there. But we don't today. But that doesn't mean that they don't have animals. And that's a very important point. Um, coming up this Saturday is the monthly pet adoption day, right? Correct. And this month it's going to be at the Retrofit in the old Walmart building okay. on Hoffman Drive. And uh, it'll be from, who? I think it's... Is it one to three? One to... I think it's... One to four? Can we remember now? <laughs> it starts at one. It does start at one. Okay, that much we know. So it must be one to three. One to three, I yep. think a couple hours at that time. Yes. Okay. And um, plenty of kittens, puppies, dogs? Yes, cats. I've seen a few of the new dogs that have come in okay. on the little Facebook page there and some cats. And we've got some cats have been in the system that still are looking for their forever homes, of course, and then some kittens. Okay. So, and uh, I'm pretty sure with the fall coming, we'll have some more kittens and puppies coming in. So, of course we will. please help us. Remove some space and or make some space so we can bring some more in and find a good home for yes. for all of those animals. Also going on this Saturday, though it is full, we do want to mention it. It's the um, low cost spay neuter is also going on this Saturday here in Owatonna. Yes, that is correct. Okay. We have that about every other month, and we work with two different mm -hmm. companies um, that come down here and do that for us. Okay. So if you want to call the number, if you need uh, to have your animal pet and pet spayed or neutered, uh, contact the Humane Society at 451-4512 and they will get you in contact with the correct company that we're doing that month. Okay. And the next one will be in November. Okay. And it's for those individuals who may, you know, who may want to do the right thing, which is to spay and neuter our pets so that we don't have all the strays and the litters and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But maybe the cost is prohibitive for them to go through the regular uh, veterinarian route. And so this is an option um, for those. So if you or someone you know is saying, hey, I'd love to get, you know, the dog, cat spayed, neutered, but I just, you know, it's a lot of money. This is one way for them to get it done at a, at a lower cost. Absolutely. And to yes. do the right, like I said, do the right thing. Now, pet adoption, um, you've had some success recently. Let's just kind of re let's go back and recap the fair, yes. which seems like a long time ago now, but it really wasn't. It was only a month, but um, right. you had a fair booth and you had some really good success there, right? Yes, we uh, ran a special with our cats and our kittens. And so we were doing an adoption fee of $49 for our cats and 
$99 for our kittens, which are five, under five months. Right. And uh, we, we adopted out several during the fair, okay. and we thought it was very successful, so we had two more adoption events coming up, and said, so why don't we just extend that out? Okay. And so we had uh, on, um, I believe it was Labor Day weekend, we did at the Medford Mall. We had okay. a little thing out there. They cooperated with us and let us come out with all of our events and had a big kids games and oh, food fun. and treats and all kinds of stuff and we adopted out uh, two of our dogs actually okay. so that was kind of fun and then um, on August or September 6th we had a big event along with the other southern Minnesota uh, rescues and and humane societies down in Rochester and okay. so we adopted out a few more down there. Okay and that was kind of called a super pet adoption super day. Super right? pet because adoption <laughs> day yes it had all <laughs> kinds of people coming from different parts of the, the state. All kinds so. of people and all kind of pets and absolutely and successful yes. too. So great well we're always glad to hear that. Always know that you're looking for um, you know foster homes and, and things too for yes. the pets that you do have in the system, right. correct? Yes, um, some of our foster homes are really full and yeah. could use a little break. So, um, and of course, they're always coming in. There's always strays and, and surrenders, so we could always use more, okay. both cat and dog foster okay. homes. So keep that in mind. Lots of news there in regards to the Pet Adoption Day. And again, the low-cost spay neuter will be here again in a couple months. And although this one is full, keep that in mind if that's something you yes. could use. Be back again in November. Right. Got to keep my month straight. And you can sign up for that now. So okay. you don't have to wait and be a little bit ahead of that. You can okay. sign up for it now to okay. be done in November. Well, good plan then if somebody's got an animal that's going to be um, going to be needing that. We do want to talk about an event that's coming up and here we are at the, you know, we're well into September and past the halfway point now, which just seems unreal to me. I, like we were just talking about the fair and where did the time go? But you have an event coming up on October 4th and it's you're marking 25th annual and let's talk about that. Yes, it's our 25th annual pet walkathon okay. and we are super excited because we're trying to make it bigger and better and we love to see all kinds of animals there. We've had rats, we've had uh, hamsters and Don't tell me they're on a leash, right? Litter. They are maybe held or caged or something, caged, but caged, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, and we've had lizards and turtles and all kinds of different animals come and it's so fun for us especially the ones that dress them up mm -hmm. and uh, so we have a little contest for that and and we'll be doing that again this year we're just gonna have people dress them up and we'll pick have some judges pick the perfect okay. or the best costume and stuff like that so it'll be a good time um, so registration starts at 9 okay uh, the walk starts at 10 and okay. from 9 to 11 we're gonna have some different education opportunities some nail clippings balloon animals face painting um, and different things like that going on the whole time. But okay. then the walk will start at 10. Following the walk, about 11 o'clock, we'll serve lunch and give out prizes and door prizes. And uh, one new thing this year, our t-shirts are going to be dry fit. So we'll have a little different oh, nice. little theme going on this okay. week. So. All right. Um, and this is going to be held where? At Morehouse Park in okay. the Chalet. We'll start there. And then the walk will go down to the beach and come back. That's a long walk for some of those pets or people carrying pets. Well, especially isn't it? if the turtle is walking. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. They'll be arriving back on the next day because <laughs> slow and steady wins the race. Right. Or it's not even a race, but um, and you want and it's a very very family friendly event. Correct? Absolutely. With all those things that you have going on. Yes, yes. Um, we've talked with uh, the um, the okay. reptile zoo. Oh, well, Rad Zoo. Okay. Yep, yep. Yeah, Rad Zoo. We've talked to Rad Zoo for coming out. Um, they're going to come out and do some education with us, but okay. whether the animals will be able to join us, that'll de de be determined by the weather. By if the it's weather. too cold, we might not be able oh, to get okay. the gators out. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we like it a little bit swampier, warmer, more tropical right, kind of yes. day. Right, um, yes. And so we've got some different events that we'd really, we encourage the family to come out, and we include, when we say family, we include the four-legged friends. Okay. So um, bring all your pets out, any kind of pets. Uh, make sure they have a leash or a cage. Okay. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's, it's a good time. What do they need to do ahead of time? So this is designed to, you've got a sponsor sheet there, they mm -hmm. can pick up a brochure. Is it designed to help raise funds? What do you mean society? Yes. Or, you know, it's obviously a very fun <clears throat> day mm -hmm. just to come and walk and participate in the educational and the games and all that kind of thing mm -hmm. and, and get some good exercise and walk a pet and enjoy the lovely fall colors. But it also does benefit the Humane Society. Yes, we encourage you to um, gather some pledges with our sponsor sheet. And anyone who does 
dollars or more gets a free shirt. Okay. So, um, and then we have you know other things going on that you can sell and buy. But um, the money really goes to helping us get those vet bills paid. Okay. And um, you know we we provide all of the food and vet care and everything for our foster homes. They don't need to buy anything. So okay. um, this money helps with those kind of Quite a expenses. Bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are all the brochures orange like this? Yes. Or are they, okay, so this is what you want to be looking for. I'm going to kind of hold this up in between us, but you're going to look for this orange little trifold brochure. Um, and it's, I'm guessing they're kind of all over town, wherever, mm -hmm. wherever you can possibly put your camera. There we go. <laughs> oh, see, I moved. Whoops, see there. And it's always backwards. When I try to do this on the monitor, I'm like, wow. So that's what they look like. There's a little spot in the middle that then talks about, see, look at that. Look at, look at I feel so kind of goofy when I try to make this work on the monitor. Um, a space for your pledges, a space that talks about um, um, what the event is and what's going on that day. And you have a lot of great businesses and sponsors that have supported this both this year and in the past. Yes, yes. We, um, we get a lot of sponsors and like Culligan is always giving us water for our walkers. Okay. And uh, each year we have a little vendor, um, either homemade or something that they sell that's pet related. Okay. In the past we've had um, different pet beds and different okay. things like that. And so again we'll have someone home and make it home homemade dog treats okay. and selling those. So it's kind of fun to do different things like that and then get the community support and, yeah. and the towns are always given the door prizes. So. And I'm guessing that if someone wants to shorten the walk a little bit too, they can just turn around and come back whenever they want to. You know, it's a long walk all the way down mm -hmm. and then once you're there at the beach, you realize you have the whole way to walk back. So <laughs> if someone has a smaller dog that's maybe not used to a longer walk or something like that, they could just... I'm assuming, go yes. as long as they yep, would like. Yep, or if you've got a really quick, big, great Dane that'll walk really fast and come back really fast, if you want to <laughs> run. Uh, yes, we, we, you can come back. We've got some different events. We've got some uh, photo booth going on. Okay, so fun. you can come back, if, shoulder walk, and do some things before the lunch okay. starts. But a lot of things going on there. Well, that's going to be a lot of fun. And we do want to make mention, kind of as a sort of a save the date um, of the Merry Market coming up in December. And I know we'll have you folks on again before that, and we'll talk a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But when is that? It is going to be December 13th okay. and it'll be at the Eagles Okay, and it's a vendor craft fair. Yep, kind and that expo. will be benefiting our Steel County Humane Society. So yes. very good, Elizabeth. Thank you so much to talk about. We almost didn't miss our four-legged friends, but yes, we really did. <laughs> I love having sure them here, but I love, next having, time. <laughs> I love having you here as well, as Elizabeth. So we have uh, Pet Adoption Day this Saturday. We have the uh, Pet Walkathon on October 4th. Get involved in any and all, find a forever home or be that forever home for a, a pet in need. And thank you so much for all your work with the Humane Society, too. And we wish we were a very successful event on the 4th, too. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. We'll take a break for our supporters and we'll be back to wrap up. Hi, I'm Pete Connor. I'm here to say some things about an upcoming bicycle safety course that's going to be held here in Owatonna. It's called TS 101. It will be held on the 26th and 27th of September. Uh, it's for people who uh, are riders or drivers of bicycles that want to learn more about bike safety, about bike rules, and about bike handling technique. If you have any interest, give me a call. I'm at 456-1099. Hi, I'm Amy Martinez. And I'm Adam Martinez, owners of Snap Fitness in Owatonna. Snap Fitness is a fast, convenient, and affordable fitness center, and we're proud supporters of the Owatonna Today Show. Everyone deserves opportunities to have a good life, a quality education that leads to a stable job, enough income to support a family through retirement, and good health. But the reality is, Many children fall behind, many families are struggling, and many others are in poor health. United Way's goal is to find long-term solutions. Thanks to a grant from the Otto Bremer Foundation, we're hosting community conversations this year to address these issues. If you'd like to join us, please call our office. Hello, I'm Sean McNulty. And I'm Deb Gillard with Brookdale Senior Living, Sterling House, and Clarebridge of Owatonna. And we are a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. Welcome back in time to wrap it up for this Wednesday, September 17th. We certainly appreciate our on location and our guests today. Steel County Historical Society is pleased to welcome historian Barry Adams for a lecture about the Civil War Battle of Nashville. That is tomorrow, Thursday, September 18th at 7 in the History Center at 1700 Austin Road. 
Um, that program will be introducing the audience to dozens of Steele County Civil War veterans. Admission to the lecture is free for Steele County Historical Society members, $2 for non-members. If you have any questions, call the Historical Society at 451-1420. Also, A Taste of Steele County and Silent Auction is going on tomorrow, Thursday, September 18th. 5 to 7 at the Eagles Club. We had those folks on earlier this week. $15 for adults, $10 for children 12 and under, and they have a dozen vendors there. Tories, Bakery, Steve's Meat Market, Costas, Hy-Vee Deli, Central Park Coffee, uh, Mizuki Fusion, Andiamo, El Tequila, the Elks, and it is at the Eagles Club, and they're also um, sampling their wares as well. That's to benefit AAUW here in Steele County, and it's a taste of Steele County going on tomorrow evening, so it'll be a lot of great fun there. Coming up on Friday's program, we will be talking Culture Fest, and also um, we will be talking with Colin Whitmer, our Steel County Recycling Coordinator. We hope you have a great day today. We'll see you on Friday.